Platform Racing was an online racing game released in 2007 by Jacob Gran, known online as Jigman. The game received two sequels shortly after, Platform Racing 2 in 2008, and Platform Racing 3 in 2010. The two sequels featured level editors, so players could build their very own levels and play online with friends. Races, quizzes, traps, deathmatches, even hotels all created by the community rose in popularity quickly. But this isn't a story about those popular level types. This story doesn't even take place during the heyday of the series when there would be hundreds of players online at once. This is a story about a small community of dedicated players, and what can go so very wrong when level creation tools fall into the wrong hands. This is the story of Roller Levels. While Platform Racing 2 continued to thrive throughout the mid-2010s, Platform Racing 3 wasn't as lucky. The game didn't receive updates past 2011, while PR2 continued to get new content. Sparkworks, the website that PR3 was hosted on, wasn't the most reliable, often being incredibly laggy and going offline for long periods at a time, making it difficult to load the website, let alone actually play the game. In February of 2015, Sparkworks.com had shut down for good, and being the only site it was hosted on, Platform Racing 3 went down with it. Acid Forums was a website where many old members of the Platform Racing and Jigman community would gather. In late 2015, user Isokisa posted about Platform Racing 3 Reborn, a revival of the game he had started working on. And for the first time in years, Platform Racing 3 was thriving once more. Reborn never reached the numbers the original game had during its heyday, but it had a decently sized community of very dedicated players. There was a growing player base, daily activity, new campaign levels, and a development team adding new content that wasn't in the original game. Like Platform Racing 2, there were plenty of race and trap levels created, but in Platform Racing 3, the deathmatch mode had always been the most popular. Players could create their own arenas and fight with up to 8 other players to be the last one standing. Platform Racing 3 players, more than anything else, wanted to win prizes. Parts that could be used to customize your character would drop randomly in matches, and only first place would get to keep the prize. Players who already had the part would be fighting for an extra boost in experience. Deathmatches became so popular partly due to how short they were to play, allowing time for more games and more opportunities for players to win parts, or experience. With races, it was a mad dash to the finish. They required skill to get through precisely, and oftentimes higher ranked players with more stats would have an advantage. Deathmatches felt like anyone's game up until the very end. So deathmatches became a highly competitive sport. Players fighting for prizes or experience, doing whatever it took to win. Some might try to team with others to be the last one standing, some might try bargaining, begging for the prize. All of the messages on screen are from different people who agreed to type the phrase Ice is a legend in chat just in exchange for a part that they needed. Prizes were everything, no matter the cost. PR3R in its early years was just nothing but animosity over prizes. People were teaming on each other to get a hold of prizes that they needed. I don't know, maybe I just enjoyed the drama, but it was a good time back then. Yeah, there was a lot of drama uh, around prizes, especially with hats, because if you lose out on a part, you know, it's sad, but those don't really do anything other than look cool. But hats actually do stuff, so like Santa hat will turn any block that you walk on into ice, uh, the top hat can walk through certain blocks, the shark hat is faster in water. So if there's somebody who has that hat already, and they win and don't give it to the person who needs it, they were considered like the most despicable person in the world. There was a lot of drama <laughs> uh, around prize stealing, as it was called. There would even be massive tournaments where any number of players could join, and the winners of each game could pick any prize of their choosing. For years, this is what Platform Racing 3 Reborn was all about. But what was to come couldn't have been any further from that. On July 26th, 2017, the following screenshots were posted to the Gods of Platform Racing 3 Discord server, the unofficial home base of the community. What you're looking at are the first known completions of a new kind of level, a roller level. The level was called Roller Desert 2, created by the user SuperGuy0173, a sequel to his first Roller Desert level, and anyone who played it said the same thing. This level is terrible. 
but not in the way a normal level would be. For one thing, the fall is incredibly long. If you fall off the level, you're forced to wait 47 seconds until you respawn. This is done by placing a single block far below the course to increase the level's boundaries. So the level was punishing, but what was the actual level design like? Much of the level is one massive staircase filled with bomb blocks. It's impossible to make it up the stairs without clearing out a path by running into bombs, each hit resulting in a couple seconds of hit stun. The entire level is built like this, one terrible idea after another, each one carefully constructed to waste as much time as possible. There's a section where you ride along the top of arrow blocks, and the path is filled with bombs, forcing the player to hit one and fall back down to the bottom of the area multiple times. There's a water net section, making you hit bombs and constantly respawn into the water while you deal with the hit stun. And every one of these sections of the level is incredibly long. My first roller was Roller Desert 2 by Superguy 4 Numbers. And I thought the concept was really stupid and boring. The first roller I played, I think, was Roller Desert 2. I remember people saying stuff about like rollers and wondering, huh, what's a roller? I didn't finish it the first time, but I think it was a healthy introduction to the trend. I think it's been like two or three years since I've seen Roller Desert 2 actually. It was among the first to arise before rollers really took off. The Roller Desert levels weren't the first levels like this. Any game with a level editor is going to have bad repetitive joke levels that only exist to frustrate players, and the platform racing series was no exception. One very early level in Reborn, Endurance, predates Roller Desert and has a somewhat similar concept but Endurance was much smaller in scale, and block placement felt far more random. It's considered to be the unknown, escapee granddaddy of rollers, and I remember Northodox was very much into that level, and he introduced it to me as we played a lot of levels together at the time. And it was the worst experience of my life. While similar levels had existed for years, nothing quite like these had ever been seen before. Roller Desert standardized specific characteristics, such as the absurd length, endless bombs, long punishing drops, and staircase design that would become the elements to define this new genre. Superguy said that the name Roller came from how the level's map somewhat resembled a roller coaster. Not much else is known about the origin of the first few roller levels. Superguy0173 made three entries in the Roller Desert series, as well as the spin-off, Roller Desert Glitches. He started to work on a few other rollers, but they would go unfinished, as Superguy0173 would soon depart from the platform racing community, his last login on August 16th, 2018. The first Roller Desert went by mostly unnoticed, but for whatever reason, Roller Desert 2 really caught the attention of the community. Most people hated it, writing it off as a meaningless joke level, and wouldn't bother finishing it. The whole thing takes about 40 minutes to complete, and in this screenshot, you can see that most players had quit before the end. In a community that spent most of their time playing short matches that only took a few minutes at most, there was no place for a level that long. But on July 26, 2017, five dedicated players managed to best Roller Desert 2 across two separate runs. Five players wanted to know if something like this was really possible. The first known completion goes to Nudie Naputi, who is considered to be one of PR3R's most skilled players, and the founder of PR3 Reborn, Isokisa. Within an hour, a team consisting of Duffly, Magic Pillow, and Tad Tad were the next to clear the level. As time went on, I realized, you know, maybe this is beatable. We might as well just push through. After completing the level, I felt amazing. It, it felt good complete such a long and painful level. Yeah, I tend to love a lot of really stupid stuff, so of course I was immediately hooked on roller levels. One of my first levels in Platform Racing 2 back in 2008 was called Boom Boom Boom, and the whole thing was just one big room filled with mines. But Roller Desert 2 was so interesting to me because it felt like nothing like that should even exist. Like, it just doesn't even make sense. And that was what made it fascinating. So, yeah, since the beginning I've always been into rollers. Uh, even when I was a little kid, I rolled down a flight of concrete stairs, so that might have contributed towards my love of these levels one way or another. So how does one complete Roller Desert 2, a level designed to waste as much of the player's time as possible? Teamwork. When you hit a bomb, you'll take some knockback. With precision, you can figure out the best way to hit a bomb, causing yourself to get blasted back into another. The higher your bombs per hit rate, the faster you can clear a path. 
and with a handful of players all contributing, the level, while still long, takes significantly less time. Much of the community was confused seeing players spend 40 minutes playing a level like that. Later on the same day, Duffley would go on to complete the first Roller Desert solo, posting his progress on Discord throughout the level. It took 46 minutes, confusing the rest of the community even further. Some, however, were intrigued by it. One well-known member of the PR3 community and future developer for the game, RMX.exe being one of them. Honestly, I have no idea how rollers caught on. People were just hosting them, and people were just joining. In the days following Roller Desert 2, the roller craze had struck the PR3 community. Superguy, Duffley, Tad Tad, RMX, and a handful of others were pushing for rollers to become a real level genre, creating a bunch of new rollers in the process. RMX created Chamber Roller, which was a difficult staircase roller with an industrial theme. Sadly, the level was later deleted, and no footage exists. Duffley created Roller Space, which took the Endless Mine concept and did something new. Roller Space is all about bringing something new into the design of the level. Instead of being a huge mountain filled with bombs, it was a more straight and basic design. First part was just going right and jumping over mines. On top there are safety nets, so you can't bounce on top of the blocks. Although you can use Santa Hat to, get, to just, you know, slide on top. Like, I had Santa Hat, and I was just like going over the mines and like we were like trying to battle for the Santa. Which I didn't account for in any way. You can totally do that. The only known completion of this roller was on December 3rd, 2017, and was beaten by Duffley, the Black Bigfoot, and Magimon. One of the most hated of the early rollers was Roller Garfield Lulpip, a long, tall staircase roller, this time featuring wind. I was really into drawing Garfield around this time, so I thought a Garfield roller would be funny. I made it a wind level to represent the smoke coming from Garfield's pipe. Uh, a couple of prizes actually dropped here, which was funny. A party hat and dino body, but I don't think anyone's actually won anything here, because there were a few spots where you could get permanently stuck. Only a couple of us have actually beaten the level that I know of, and two of them, Gladiator and John 3, only beat it through hacking. There were more early rollers that would later be lost to time, with only tails passed down by the community. A level called Roller Classic Bricks was listed among the first rollers, but it's since been deleted, with nobody recalling who made it or what it was. LP9, who made some of the most impressive race levels in the early years of Reborn, made a roller trap level around this time, but this level seems to have been lost as well. Even though many hated playing rollers, almost everybody was making them. I feel like rollers caught on just because of how inclined people were to win just platform racing three levels. The absurdity of how long and pointless the levels are just added one more layer of, you know, incentive to beat the level, if that makes any sense. While it's a somewhat smaller community, um, I think that just amplifies the amount of fun that you guys can have with it. Rollers are absurd, and I think that people find absurd things funny. And things that people find funny get copied, given a personal touch if you're lucky, and then redistributed. I think it's entirely possible that rollers existed in OG PR3 back in the day, but because of the demand for actually good levels, those levels were not really played. I think there's a certain nostalgia for levels that look like they could have been created by a nine-year-old with too much spare time. It really evokes what old Platform Resident 3 used to be like. How we spent so much time just making these levels that were complete garbage, yet people played them. I think the reason that rollers caught on is because they are very easy to make. All you have to do is grab a solid block and track it to the top right corner of the map. After that, you do the same with mines. After the first few days, much of the community was quickly beginning to hate these levels, saying they were a waste of time. Even Ice That's Cool, the owner of the Gods of Platform Racing 3 Discord server, and at the time PR3 YouTuber, spoke out many times against rollers, saying anybody who plays roller levels should be ashamed of themselves. Another one of the first rollers, and one of the few rollers I actually put some effort into, was Avocado Hell. This was more of an obstacle course suspended over a massive pit, so if you fail an obstacle, you'll be falling for a few minutes. RMX.exe actually helped me with some of the ideas for this. 
There's a lot of funny stuff. There are these avocados that move really quickly and knock you into a hole, some annoying bounce blocks surrounded by hurt blocks, and a really annoying water section. The first roller I actually completed, if this really counts as a roller, would be Avocado Hell. I do remember the dragon parts I believe were new at the time, and one of them dropped there, so I had to complete the level to get it. Uh, luckily, it didn't take that long. If it was a full-fledged, like, 40-minute roller, I probably wouldn't have done it. Avocado Hell was one of the earliest rollers to feature a leaderboard, and the record held by LP9 would top it for years, finishing in just 4 minutes and 25 seconds. Although they were gaining some traction, these levels were still despised by much of the community. They needed a big push to become a true staple of Platform Racing 3. The roller craze wasn't the only event happening in July of 2017, though. The community was in the middle of holding their third campaign contest. This was an event where players could create races for the game's single-player campaign, and a panel of judges would decide on the ones that would make it in. The judges would have to play through every level and judge them fairly. Tad decided it would be a funny idea to submit a handful of roller levels and trick the campaign judges into playing them. Roller Desert 2, Roller Garfield Little Tip, Roller Space, and Chamber Roller were all submitted. On July 28th, only two days after the completion of Roller Desert 2, the first ever video footage of a roller was captured, and a first reaction to rollers at that. Cade642, known then as the owner of the Astro Penguin 642 YouTube channel, and later the Decade Decaf channel, was one of the most well-known members of the community. They were a developer for the game, Gods of PR3 moderator, popular level maker, and was one of the judges for the newest campaign contest. Cade, along with another player, TomDRC1, recorded a video judging all of the levels submitted to the contest, and at the very end, the two of them arrive at the roller levels. Next one we have... Oh god, okay, so someone warned me about these. How much problems do we have left? <laughs> we have four left. There are four of them that all have the word roller in them, and I have no idea why. The whole of the word what? Excuse me? What? No, this is this is not a campaign map. This okay, is but we still have to play it. it zero out of ten. It might have a deeper meaning. Yeah! A zero out of ten. Okay, I'm not gonna play this level, but I'm gonna spectate it. I'm gonna view the re- okay, jeez. Spectate the level, check out what's in store. Yeah, okay. It's literally just this. Okay, I'm gonna give this a level a shocking minus 5 out of 10. This is <laughs> trash. This is not even supposed to be in the contest. I'm pretty Why? sure it's a shit post. But yeah. This I mean, is, this is pretty bad. No. <laughs> I'm gonna spectate it in one second. Yeah, uh, I'm not playing this. What is it, though? Excuse uh, me? So, it's the same thing. Right. I swear to God, if this is a shit post. People actually beat this? Also, apparently- No! If you fall, it's forever. Man, this is actually awful, and people subjected themselves to this and actually beat it. Yes. Wait, that was it. only- that was only that part? Jesus Christ. I thought it was funny, of course. I I didn't I didn't disapprove of the idea cuz like I think the the joke was like they were being submitted because you have to finish the campaign entries in order to rate them fairly, which is pretty true. Um but I think you could spectate them and get the same effect, especially when you consider that there were more or less joke entries. Needless to say, none of the roller levels were accepted into the campaign. On August 3rd, 2017, TadTad -tad and RMX.exe recorded a walkthrough video for RMX's level Chamber, a long and difficult maze-like puzzle map. After it was complete, the two decided to play some PR3, and that of course brought them to hosting roller levels. By this point, most people knew what rollers were and would refuse to join them, but RMX had a new idea to trick people into playing them. I renamed it to like... Like like we would like we would just play like a I would name a roller Jungle DM, and like I would make it a deathmatch and stuff like that, and like I would like I would try and like pose it as like a real real level like me just hosting it, 
and then it's in the actuality it's a it's a roller and stuff like that. RMX would keep renaming his chamber roller different things to trick people into joining, and at one point the dragon head prize dropped. This was a very rare item at the time, so valuable that players were actually willing to attempt the roller in order to win it. RMX thought ahead when making the level, however, and included a failsafe in the event of a prize drop-in. I did a failsafe for if a prize dropped, that we could just go to a secret teleport and teleport right to the finish. <laughs> and like, I remember, uh, I remember I won Dragon Head like that, and I think somebody else won like some other dragon parts, but it was it was really really funny. On this same day, a new roller level would be created. Tad asked RMX for an idea on what to base a level on, and RMX mentioned a Ratatouille-themed roller. While it would be a relatively obscure level for some time, this day was the creation of Roller Rummy Routoutoutoui, which would later become one of the most iconic rollers in the game. Tad and RMX hosted the level, and a few people joined, but most of them had quit long before the end. They didn't finish the level, but the players to make it the furthest in were Tad, RMX, and to their surprise, Cade. The level, called Roller Rummy for short, became something of a mascot for rollers, with this rat drawing often being associated with the genre. That, like, really stuck to the Platform Racing 3, like, community in general. And eventually, it just... People started making fun of it, pretty much, like, saying, Funny Rat, and then that became a joke in and of itself. And at this point, people have just been attached to rats. Roller Rummy quickly became a meme within the community. Emotes of the rat would be posted all around the Gods of Platform Racing 3 Discord server, and there was even a rat set made for the game. The parts have never been officially released, but they do exist within the game's files. Not much of note happened for a long time after the campaign contest. Rollers were still being created, of course, but most of the community understandably chose to play other things. Superguy released Roller Desert 3 in February 2018, but it never really caught on like the second. Months and months went by without much of anything happening. Rollers seemed to be a passing fad, and nothing more. In January 2018, Tad had started a new YouTube channel. After watching one of his videos, RMX was reminded of an idea he had come up with back in July, around the time the roller craze had begun. A podcast where PR3 players had to play a roller, and the episode can't end until the level is finished. And I was like, that's probably like a perfect scenario, like there's not much gameplay, and it's literally just us holding a button. That, that was how the initial idea came about, that, and I just also wanted to just chill and gather some people. RMX invited Tad to join, as well as Cade and Ice That's Cool, who would both upload PR3 videos to their YouTube channels. Cade agreed to join, and Ice That's Cool was initially interested in joining, until he found out that it wouldn't be normal PR3 levels played on the podcast. The thought of having to play roller levels was a deal breaker for him. Ooh, a podcast? Don't mind if I join. And then they were like, all right, it's gonna be called Rollercast, and we're gonna play Roller levels, and I'm like, oh, roller levels? Those are stupid and boring. Have fun. And then I just kind of backed out of it. So I initially got Tad and Kate on board. Tad, like, you were a, um, you were a huge advocate for, like, the roller levels. I remember you were, um, you were hosting them a lot, and you were just, like, making a lot as well. After the idea of me, like, initially deciding that a roller and a podcast, like, go hand in hand, I just said, you know, why not get the master of rollers himself, you know? And as for Cade, I literally just asked at AstroPenguin642 at the time, by the way. I was invited by Tad and RMX, and we decided it would be a fantastic idea to just, you know, do a podcast while playing roller levels. I was actually pretty nervous going into the first recording session for RollerCast. I had only been in a call with RMX once before when we did the chamber walkthrough, and I think my only interaction with Kate up to that point was making them play rollers for that contest, so I wasn't really sure how that would go. I was more excited than nervous though, it seemed like a fun concept and a cool way to bring roller levels further into the spotlight. The first episode of RollerCast actually had quite a bit of hype leading up to it. Big collaborations between PR3 players was a rare occurrence. Some people were excited to see rollers get some real recognition, and others were excited to see the cast torture themselves. On March 11th, RollerCast Episode 1 was uploaded on both the Astro Penguin 642 and Tad I Guess YouTube channels. It got quite a bit of attention across both channels, and the series would go on to receive critical acclaim. Why is it Garfield in this video? Why are you guys doing videos on roller levels? 
Can I have your babies? Please. Bad Vaidel. Hi, can we play Fortnite? My username is MetalJet2009. The level featured in this first episode was called Ultimate Roller Rollercast Episode 1, created by Tad Tad. The level used RMX's famous puzzle map chamber, tore it apart, and made a roller out of it. It is essentially a roller level that destroys RMX's level called Chamber. Chamber is a platform racing level. It's it's uh it's a race, but it has like a lot of different aspects and it's a pretty grand level. Like it has a lot a big scope and I remember Armex was really proud of that level for good reason and he treated it like his child when it came to PR3. So to see Tad just completely just annihilate the integrity of that level and see Armex's reaction to his level being deconstructed into a roller, that was what made that level so great for me. Okay, so this is the very first. <laughs> the very first. Gee, this looks roller, familiar. Roller level. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Wait. All right. You guys <laughs> ready to go? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have no idea where to go. You made this level. What are you talking about? <laughs> My favorite roller cast moment, like this is the obvious answer and it might be cheating to say this because I feel like this would be everyone's answer, but when RMX his uh, alarm went off. Oh my god. What is that? Guys, um I might need to pause for a second. Okay. My... Yeah. Attention. Attention. Look, listen. Emergency has been recorded in the building. What? Please. Oh. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. Okay. Guys. Oh, okay, geez, right, that okay. Sounds... I'll be right back. All right, see ya. Yeah, just just think of something to talk about or something when I get back. I'll be right back. We had for like a minute or two, we were hearing the alarm sound in his microphone. <laughs> Jesus, I'm muting him. I have no idea. I don't remember anymore. But that was my favorite moment because um, I watched it back. Like, whenever I left, and like, apparently the alarm was like, screeching. Following the first episode of RollerCast, Roller seemed a lot more accepted throughout the community. Roller discussion was seen a lot more frequently in chat, and was met with a bit less negativity. Within the next year, even people who despised the very concept of Rollers initially would be excited whenever a new one released. I think the first episode of RollerCast showed people that there is more to Rollers than just being joke levels. Like, people thought Rollers were just boring and painful to play, but that first episode showed the three of us genuinely having fun playing through the whole thing. Playing a Roller alone it usually is not fun. There is always a sense of community playing roller levels. Teamwork is almost required to finish them in a reasonable amount of time. And it felt like that sense of community started to grow even more going forward. Just look at RollerCast. It's a bunch of friends having fun playing some rollers. Some low effort levels with a long length just talking. I think that's probably one of the best things about rollers is how much they brought the community together. I wasn't as frustrated with roller levels as I feel like some of the people who played Pure 3 at the time were. Like I could I could sit through a roller level and be completely fine like past 40 minutes and it would feel like 10. But yeah, uh, I felt like Rollercast was a really good series and I it was a good opportunity to get to know Tad and RMX a little bit better and upload some content onto YouTube as well. The first episode of RollerCast did such a good job of showing how much fun rollers can be that known roller hater Ice That's Cool decided he was back in to do RollerCast and would go on to be a guest star in episode 2. There were two levels featured in episode 2, the first being Bumworld Deluxe, a level made by Ice That's Cool and the rollerfied sequel to his level Bumworld. When I made Bumworld Deluxe, I made it with the intent of just messing with the other people on RollerCast. I remember I had a little section up top that people might think they could cheat, but when they got there, there was just a giant L. And along with this, I had a little platform that if you fell down it, you would just be stuck there for the entire level. But I decided to really just mess with people by including a little area that I could just skip the level with. It was completely secret, and I made sure there were multiple steps so that other people wouldn't notice it or anything like that. So the plan was, people were going to start playing the roller, and while they were doing that, I would be able to sneak to the back. And 30 seconds in, the blocks will disappear. 
in the back wall, and I could walk through there, and after I walk through, there's this narrow passageway that leads straight up, covered in vanish blocks, so that way you have to have Top Hat to go through it. Because I knew that none of the other members of RollerCast actively used Top Hat except for me. So that way I could proof it, so that way only I could go through it. So I go up there, and then I get teleported to the end. And the end has one last final question. It's about uh, Prison Air, or Prison Air, however you want to pronounce it, which was an old event on my server Gods of PR3. It was based entirely off that, and it was a subjective question. And if you got it right, you got sent to the end. And if you got it wrong, you had to wait a little bit. The level ended up being pretty short, so they played a second made by Tad. He took the chamber approach, and took his already massive level, Pier 3 Legends, which was a collection of 30 or so deathmatch levels from the game on a single map, and turned that into a ruler as well. Pier 3 Legends was sorta of neat because it was this huge maze and you had to find the teleports to actually get to the roller part of the level. I wouldn't say it was good, but it was funny, and I think that's what really matters. Episode 3 would feature another well-known member of the community, Mist, a longtime PR3 player and a mod on the GoPR3 Discord server. Now, my invitation into RollerCast was a very momentous occasion in my life. Um, uh, it was actually my first time having my voice recorded in I don't even know how long, so I tried to kind of compensate for my extremely high voice by making myself sound as monotone and tired as possible. Which I thought would make me sound deeper, but it did not. Anyway, um, I was invited when Armex came into Mopir 3, and he said, Does anyone want to call dibs on um, being in the next Rollercast, Rollercast Episode 3? And I said, I have, I have quite the quick typing speed I thought you should know, Sure, LMAO. Episode 4 would bring back Ice That's Cool, and he would be a regular member from then on. This was also the episode where Roller Rummy was featured, and from this point on would be a meme within the platform racing community. Nearing the end of 2018, roller discussion slowed down quite a bit. Rollers might have died completely early in the year, but RollerCast managed to make them somewhat relevant throughout 2018, releasing a new episode every few months, keeping the genre alive. By late 2018, many of the original roller makers weren't around anymore. Superguy had quit PR3, and Duffley wasn't able to log into the game anymore after the site switched from Gold Tree servers to PR3 Hub. I think PR3 stopped working for me around early 2019. It was after some kind of update that ISO did. I couldn't log in because it would just keep loading at the login screen, but if I did managed to log in, everything else in the game would be frozen. But somehow, this was magically fixed late 2020. PR3 as a whole was slowing down and many old members had left. But in early 2019, the roller community would gain a lot of new blood, and there was a large rise in the creation and popularity of new levels. In January 2019, two rollers, Avocado Hell and Roller Rummy, were submitted to a new campaign contest. Both were critically panned by the judges, and were omitted from the contest. Roller Rummy Route to Tautui. Game played, 10 points. 80% of your time is spent staring at the rat while you fall, so the 20% you aren't is the gameplay, I guess. Art, 20 points. <laughs> Funny rat. Avocado Hell. Gameplay, 10 points. In traditional roller fashion, 80% of the gameplay consists of falling, so I'm giving it 10 points for the 20% of gameplay which isn't falling. Innovation, 10 points. Mini roller's kinda special, but most of it's just basic platforming stuff. In April of 2019, Tad decided it was time to hold his own contest. The very first roller creation contest. People on the Discord server could submit rollers they made for the contest, and Tad would have to play through the winning levels in their entirety in a live stream that took place on May 8th. I still feel like I could have done a better job organizing the event. The judging process wasn't well done, the whole thing felt a little rushed. Still, this was a time where there were tons of rollers being created, and the contest definitely helped with that. Platform Racing 3 as a whole was becoming active again, and this was the largest wave of new rollers the game ever saw. Players new and old were all making new levels. Some of the more noteworthy rollers during this time period included Roller Romy by X-Guest, a fairly standard roller that featured artwork of many community members in the level's background. 
Gods of Platform Racing 3 moderator Mimsim made his first roller round this time, called Disappointment Roller. Disappointment Roller was my first and only attempt at creating a roller. I wanted to make a roller that was garbage, and overall just completely chaotic, yet boring. Disorganized, that's the word I'm looking for. I ended up having one part of the Disappointment Roller that I think I was pretty okay with, but it was more of a frost element, not a roller. Look, I'll be honest, I think I just wanted a level that Roller Cats could play and have fun with. It was never played, but you know, it's been a while since I tested it. Droller Factory by Ordo9 was an odd take on rollers. Using new mechanics allowed by custom code blocks, Ordo made a level where you have to glide through various narrow tunnels of bombs. Cola Rollin' by Camera the Dragon was another standard roller where bombs were all bottles of cola. Despite primarily being a Platform Racing 2 player, the wacky concept and popularity of rollers drew him to PR3 for a time. While much of the level is fairly standard and easy, there are smiley face blocks scattered throughout the level, and touching one will cause a player to teleport all the way back to the beginning of the level. This would become a reoccurring element for difficult rollers much later on, but Camera's level was the first time it had ever been seen. After some players said Cola Rollin' was too easy, Camera released extended Cola Rollin' Horrific version, a much longer and more challenging version of the course. There was Vast Roller made by Cade. This was a roller inspired by their game Vast Forecast that made excellent use of PR3's wind mechanics. Ice That's Cool made the legendary Thanusio's Pizzeria. And I made Thanusio's Pizzeria because of a joke in Rollercast 6 about Italian Thanos. I also remember in the level, I had this section with a bunch of vanish blocks because I playtested it for a bit, and I realized it was way too short, so I just added a bunch of vanish blocks that took forever to disappear, so it artificially increased the length of the level. Swaffle Loopy Gloopy Roller Roopsie by Tad is a simple roller in the shape of a large snail, where the player would have to loop around several times, each loop becoming harder to get through. Another one by Tad, History of Film Roller, made use of the new code blocks to alter the blast impact of the mines. Each level had a different block type, bounce, ice, or water for example, and the bombs would do more knockback with each level increase. At the time of its release, it was seen as one of the more difficult rollers in the game, with no one able to complete it due to the high knockback of bombs and being able to fall back down into previous levels. During the time Duffley was unable to access the game on PC, he made a roller level using the mobile version with an extremely strict time limit. It's a very basic design. It's no different from a normal roller design, except it's much shorter way shorter, and the reason for that is because I made it on the mobile version of PR3. Crystal King 64, more commonly called Blaz, created the series of Wubby Rollers based on the Nick Jr. cartoon Wow Wow Wubsy. Blaz attempted to make the level continuously move upright with the player, but said problems arose with the respawn points. They settled on a simpler design, and the Wubby series is seen as some of the easier rollers in the game, being a good introduction for those new to rollers. Aside from the Wubby series, Blaz also made the My Apologies series, all of which brings something new to the roller genre. The first level was a floaty, horizontal tunnel where you have to use bombs to launch yourself forward. My Apologies 2 has a similar concept, but the floor and ceiling reverse your gravity when touched. In My Apologies 3, the floor and ceiling will rotate the character completely, adding more strategy to the level, leading up to a final climbing portion. According to Blaz, you can be clever and hop off the wall at times to get more airtime without hitting as many bombs, so it feels like you're playing a legitimate level at times. The user Trash, who would later become a PR3 admin, developer, and something of a community leader, created Super Roller Bros, which was the first of two levels featured in the livestream. Let's play, let's play the number one winner of the roller contest, Super Roller Bros. It was based off the Super Mario Bros. games, with bombs being represented by enemies from the series. Alright. I like that this has, uh, I like this has items, too. I think, I think that's, that's a cool idea, because most of them don't have, I, it's just, you, you run upstairs and you hit bombs, you know? This is a, a little more interesting. The roller featured small jokes and cameos throughout, boss battles at the end of each world, and a finale featuring Roller Rummy himself. 
While Super Roller Bros took under an hour to complete, the second roller featured on the livestream would be far more difficult. Rollers had gone through a lot of changes since Roller Desert 2, but this one brought rollers back to their roots of being extremely long and frustrating levels, and nobody did those better than a player by the name of the Pizza Eater 1000. 2019 was sort of the peak of roller popularity, so there were actually quite a few people that joined FYR2, uh, and most of them quit within the first hour because it uses vanish blocks for the staircase, which don't count as checkpoints, meaning if you fell off the level, you would spawn back at the beginning. Uh, there was also a block that would slowly move downwards, so as time passes, it would keep making the level bigger and bigger. So the fall at the start of the level was like 2 minutes long, if I remember right, but by like the 2 hour mark, it was like 15 minutes just to respawn. And by the time I got there, I don't think I had even reached the first checkpoint yet. I had made like no progress. I could have restarted the level and I would have been better off, because at least then, the fall wouldn't have been as long. And then after around three hours, I gave up. I, I couldn't do it. Still, I think it made for a pretty good event. Uh, you know, we did Super Roller Bros, and everyone really enjoyed that. We all had a lot of fun with that one. And then we did FYR2 for three hours, and uh, that was miserable, but, you know, we had people in the call having a good time. It was a, it was a fun little roller event, even though the roller was impossible to beat. One month after the livestream, on June 26th, 2019, the Pizza Eater 1000 managed to complete FYR2 on his own. It took him nearly seven hours to finish. In mid-June of 2019, a new type of roller experience was conceived. A few weeks prior in the Gods of PR3 Discord, moderators Catnip Overdose, Mimsim, and Tad were playing through Roller Rummy during a voice call. They decided, as a joke, it would be funny to make themselves do push-ups every time they fell, not stopping until they respawned. This sparked an idea. Catnip Overdose decided to host what he called the Swoller Fitness Program. This would be a bi-weekly event where two to three rollers would be hosted, and anytime someone fell, they had to exercise. The first session took place on June 27th. Catnip Overdose hosted three rollers, Webzy, Roller Rummy, and Roller Desert 2. RMX.exe, who is now working on Platform Racing 3 as a developer, gave all of the participants a temporary rat hat to wear during the event. This was the first time a major community event hosted by the GoPR3 staff would involve rollers, with Catnip Overdose and RMX heavily promoting the event. While sadly no footage exists from these events, there are a few screenshots taken from around this time from rollers created specifically for the program, including an edit of Roller Rummy with a new background and pizza bombs from Thanusio's Pizzeria. Another level made for the event was Swoller Roller Warm-Up by Blaz, where he destroyed cookies and chocolate bars. Swoller Fitness was surprisingly popular during the first two sessions, with numbers ranging from 10 to 15 players. The third event was set to take place on July 4th, but nobody joined, and the Swoller Fitness program was shut down after. The novelty had worn off for some, and it became difficult to schedule such a long event for so many people who were interested. The Swoller Fitness event was pretty interesting, because I got to go out of it feeling like a hero. There were two types of people. There were the bomb riders and the losers in the back. And I was one of the bomb riders until like the mid late stage of the level when I realized I haven't fell a single time and that's pretty lame. So I decided to fall because the point of the whole event is to get stronger. And what I also realized is that those wimpy bomb riders in front of me also probably haven't fell yet. Meaning that the people in the back are going to get to their like thousandth push up and then their arms are going to dissolve and no one's going to get stronger. So I decided to step down and clear some bombs like a real man would. <laughs> Bomb riding is a technique in which players jump on top of bombs to travel above the roller rather than going through it. While an effective technique, it was also risky. Bombs don't count as checkpoints. So if you ride over the bombs and eventually fall, you're stuck back on the last checkpoint you landed on. Over the years, the bomb riding technique has been considered quite controversial. Bomb riding is selfish. 
really. <laughs> 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 I, I just like how like serious you turn for a second. Oh, here's, here's how I got so behind because you guys are freaking bomb riders. Wow, we're selfish. <laughs> <laughs> Stop these accusations. <laughs> the reason I'm not a huge fan of bomb riding on roller levels, especially if you're playing in multiplayer, is because for people who are not able to bomb ride or for people who just want to play the level normally, uh, you are not helping them get through. And I've always seen, at least personally, I've always seen roller levels as, as teamwork levels. Um, and when when someone bomb rides, you're basically slowing down um, the progress of the people playing the level normally, especially since bomb riding is difficult and risky, so for people who may not get the benefits from bomb riding, um, through either being less skilled or being unlucky in general, um, it's it's just not a good team-oriented way to play roller levels. That being said, if you're playing by yourself, or if you're in the back, then sure, go ahead. <laughs> Pizza Eater would later find a good method of countering bomb riders by placing blocks above the track that, when hit, will completely crash the game for the player to touch the block. But during Swoller, that kind of tactic wasn't really possible yet. While the rat hat worn by participants wasn't a permanent item, Roller Rummy was added to the beret hat, which changes the color of any block the player touches while wearing it. The rat would stay on the hat for a few years before being replaced by the AZB in late 2021, another iconic drawing from the game. The only known member to have kept the original rat hat was Mimsim, who won it from a competition with RMX. Getting all of the hats to the end of the level was usually a self-imposed challenge by roller players that started all the way with the first run of Roller Desert 2. Touching a bomb would remove a player's hat, so trying to take them all to the end without letting them fall was an extra challenge. Armax challenged Mimsim to carry the rat hat through the entirety of Roller Rummy, promising he could keep the item if he managed to do it. Armax gave everyone sacred funny rat hats to wear during the level. While everyone else left to play Desert Roller, I stood alone, guiding my rat through mines and over bottomless pits to the holy ground of the finish line. I dropped the funny rat into three bottomless pits, and each time I bravely dived down and caught him atop my armored head. This was so that I could permanently keep the funny rat, and I was sure to document my progress on the God of Platform Racing 3 Discord server. Now, rollers aren't usually, like, intense or anything, but throughout this whole thing I was shaking. This was probably the most intense moment I've ever had in PR3, and nothing will ever come anywhere close. The whole experience might be my favorite in the entirety of PR3, and I want the world to know. While Swoller was a big hit, it would also be the last major event in Gods of Platform Racing 3. The community had become very divided for various reasons, and many members left to start their own PR3 Discord servers. Many of them didn't last, the most successful of the time being a server started by Trash, but by November that one had fallen as well. With the community so scattered, finding details from this time period is difficult. Aside from a roller tournament hosted by ISO, not much of no happened during this time. The community would soon find a new home base, with an official Platform Racing 3 Reborn server by Isokisa. This server would be the new center of the community going forward. As of 2022, Gods of Platform Racing 3 still exists, but while it used to be a gathering place for the entire community, there's not much left. Gods of PR3 is a server that I own that used to be active back during the earlier stages of PR3R, but eventually it became inactive Around the time we permanently banned John 3, there was some final drama there, and then John 3 was banned, and then people were just leaving one by one until the server just slowed down. And eventually it just kind of went to a stopping point, and there were just a few active members left. And during this time period, I decided to make a channel called Slow PR3. And this was when slow mode was new to Discord, so I just had a six hour slow mode and people could just post whatever as long as it followed the server rules. But eventually, people started going through the alphabet. Someone posted A, and then someone else posted B, so everyone did the alphabet, and then they did the alphabet backwards, and then they started counting. And eventually, people started counting negatively. 
So there was this war between the positive counters and the negative counters, and that is still going on to this day. It has been going on in Gods of PR3 for over a year, and that is about all that happens in that server anymore. A divided community was nothing new for fans of the platform racing series. From the very beginning, Platform Racing 2 and Platform Racing 3 were split communities. Anyone who played one game typically hated the other game. Very rarely have the two games ever shared territory. Back in 2010, PR3 players mainly stuck to the forums on Sparkworks, while PR2 players stayed on the Jigman's Village forums. While Platform Racing 2 outlived the original Platform Racing 3 on Sparkworks, the game had its own trouble in 2015, just like PR3, when Jigman's Village shut down. It was the official website of all Jigman's games, and the main gathering place for PR2 players. Jacob Gran, or Jigman, had mostly moved on from PR2, the last update being two years ago by that point. It was around this time that Acid Forums had started. With both Sparkworks and Jigman's Village gone, both PR2 and PR3 were forced to temporarily share the same forums for a few years. But in 2017, around the same time Rollies were gaining traction in PR3, PR2 was seeing something of a resurgence as well. BLS 1999 had become the game's head administrator, created a revival of the Jigman's Village site, and started in May of 2018, would begin once again adding new content to the game, which would continue for many years to come. Acid Forums and the new Jigman's Village were, as expected, divided. Many longtime members stuck to Acid, while people still actively playing Jigman games moved to the village. Platform Racing 3 Reborn would eventually be brought to Jigman 2, as well as having a section for PR3 on the Jigman Discord server. During the start of the roller craze, the games were still very much divided, meaning PR2 had no knowledge of what was happening over in PR3. So starting in 2019, PR3 players decided it was time to introduce rollers to PR2. Whether it was done out of wanting PR2 players to learn about this funny level concept, or out of revenge for PR3 players being insulted for years may vary from person to person. A plan was devised to coordinate the publishing times for these PR2 rollers to ensure the newest levels tab would be filled with them. And to make sure people actually played the levels, RMX's old tactic from 2017 was used. Trap levels, where you would work with other players to get through an obstacle course without getting stuck, was the most popular level genre in the game. Rollers were created under names like Supreme Trap Work, Ocean Trap Work, and Hurricane Trap Work to trick players into joining. Tad even introduced BLS 1999, the head admin and developer for the game, to these rollers. Okay. Alright, so this is the level. <laughs> oh, and... Okay, and, like, you just, like, yeah. hit mines? Yeah, you gotta get to the end. Okay. <laughs> but there's a lot of mines. Oh. And an extremely long drop. Okay. Um... <laughs> So, <laughs> how long is this level? I've definitely played like some roller knockoffs in PR2. I probably got, well, it depends on the length of the level, right? So I probably got maybe 10 mine hits into the level before I was like, all right, this is not. <laughs> I, but I think there have been some that I finished in PR2 solely based on just wearing the crown hat because, you know, crown noob, why not? I think it was just kind of like, why is this a thing? <laughs> And like, do, and like, do people like actually play these competitively kind of thing? Shockingly enough, these levels were not well received at all by PR2 players, with most of them receiving one or two stars. One of the few rollers that was somewhat well received in PR2 was Roller of Funny, released on December 25th, 2020 by Pizza Eater 1000. The level used a feature from a recent PR2 update to prevent the use of certain hats that would be able to cheat the level. Pizza beat the level in 40 minutes, and another player, Apoth, beat it in 35. It would receive a sequel on March 20th, 2021, and would be much less well received than the original. Aside from just making a bunch of rollers, there were other attempts to get these levels noticed as well. PR2 had a Campaign of the Month contest, and unlike the contests in PR3, people could pick any nine levels to be a temporary campaign for one month. Tad put together a campaign of joke levels, ending it with PR2 Roller, and it won, being added to the game on November 3rd, 2019, and PR2 players did not enjoy it. 
Roller levels didn't really last long within PR2. Like Platform Racing 3, they had a very negative reception early on, but unlike PR3, they never really got past that point. So why didn't rollers catch on the same way in PR2? PR2 veteran Camera the Dragon says the smaller limited map size was an issue, as well as trap and frost levels already being too popular for anything new to gain much traction. Pizza Eater 1000 says PR2's different physics, more specifically how different the bomb knockback feels, made rollers less enjoyable and satisfying than PR3's. And the lobby is another contributor. In PR3, you can see what levels are being hosted right now, so it's easier to get people to play them. In PR2, there are multiple level pages, and you can only really see what levels people are joining if you search up that specific level. So nobody will find rollers unless they were actually seeking them out. I still play both games, and I feel like PR2 players take their game a lot more seriously, at least modern PR2. You know, there's less funny stuff like hotel levels or adopt a smiley face levels these days. The community now typically wants to play more legitimate levels, stuff like traps or frost levels. And PR3 is sort of the same way, where like, they'll usually want to host good levels, but if someone hosts something stupid and funny, like, sure, they'll play around to that. There's a level called Idiots in a Box, where everybody is run by AI, there's no player input, and it's basically just a spectator sport. And there's a bunch of levels with silly, random items, and those are played pretty often. But PR2 level making is a lot more basic, it doesn't have funny gimmicks and like Lua coding that PR3 has, so you can't really make a good bad level, which is why I think PR2 players don't really tend to go for that sort of thing. Although PR2 does have some features that are completely absent in PR3. Egg Roller Funny, released on April 13th, 2021, uses the Egg Minions, exclusive to PR2. As you break more and more bombs, the eggs are freed and will attack the player. As far as regular levels, I always thought they were kind of annoying. I always just thought they were a nuisance. There was never a time where I saw alien eggs in a level and was like, Oh my god, yes! Uh, from, from a creation standpoint, it's horrible. Because right now, you can't choose the different weapons that alien eggs have, or lack thereof. So, they don't really add anything for level creation except just to annoy whoever's playing, which I guess is, is part of the reason that rollers are so popular, is because that's kind of what the levels are intended for. Let's look at this level. It's egg roller funny. Oh my god. Yep. Okay. Yep. I can, I can, I can see why this is an important mechanic. I mean, eggs and egg roller levels, it's like, accomplishes the goal, I think. Um, if the goal is to annoy the person that's playing, then yeah, it absolutely accomplishes the goal. While most PR2 players never warmed up to rollers, they've left a noticeable impact on the community. Even if it's out of hatred, rollers are sometimes brought up. The term roller has become a term across both games. Despite what one might think about them, nobody can ever forget something like this. While rollers as we know them came about in Platform Racing 3, traces of their design can still be found in the first two games. The level Infernal Hop in the first Platform Racing, and the campaign level Hat Factory in Platform Racing 2, both of which were made by Jigmin, feature some elements that would later become staples of rollers. One of the most popular questions thrown around in roller discussion is what would the series creator Jigmin think of what people were making with his game? I think he'd be amused, honestly. I mean... He, he's always been a pretty easygoing guy, uh, you know, especially when it comes to, like, different creative ways that people play the game. Uh, like, I remember a lot of his Top Hat streams where people did all sorts of wacky stuff with levels. I think he played an animation level, and, and he really liked that. Um, and while, you know, rollers aren't traditional in a sense that, like, you know, animation levels became, like, a staple of all-time best on PR2, I think that he would at least be able to appreciate if somebody made a seven hour long level just dedicated to, you know, being a roller level. <laughs> so when the update came out, when Jigman added the infinite level timer, uh, he said this in the video. From BLS 1999, we have unlimited time in levels. So now you can loiter. I would like to see a level that takes three days and three nights to beat. There's a couple levels that would probably take that long to beat. Also in this 2013 video, BLS1999, who runs the game currently, was the one who suggested the infinite level timer to Jigman. So without BLS, rollers in Platform Racing 2 wouldn't even be possible.
I don't know. I, I mean, that's like so weird to think about how like that one suggestion like gave rise to a complete level genre. I think that's incredible. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> I think the fact that roller levels were born as a result of that suggestion is more a reflection on the creativity of the community and less on the idea that I had specifically. That being said, I am glad that people have reaped the benefits of the infinite level timer in PR2. While they started to die down in late 2019, rollers came back in full force early 2020. An amateur documentary covering the events of the roller community released in March, which revived interest in rollers. The Pizza Eater 1000 started to work on a big new roller, and the Rollercast series continued the same month. For the next few months, episodes would be released monthly, and would introduce MimSim as a new regular member. You guys never kicked me out, so I must have been doing something right. I think it's pretty cool that I got to stick around, honestly. I was totally on board for it the whole way, and I found myself actually excited for it. Post-pandemic rollercast, which I'm assuming is episode, like, 11 or 12 onwards, has to be the best, most fun I've had recording rollercast in a while. Instead of being every six months, it was every month for, like, a little bit. And I also did like having uh, Mim on the show, I think he was a good addition. With new episodes of RollerCast once again being produced, this led to many brand new rollers being created, many of which becoming the most iconic in the genre. Wrath of Roller Bags by Tad was another staircase-based roller, but with a door at the bottom that could only be slowly opened using the grenade items, which were at the top of the roller, forcing players to go back and forth up and down the roller several times. The level's theme also inspired the creation of a full casino roller, where players have to hit bombs to collect the most coins. Ice That's Cool would create the Roller Retirement Home. I got a pretty good laugh out of the Roller Retirement Home. I like the overall personality it has. I re also remember it being really intense at one point for some reason. I can't remember what that reason was. I suppose this is why we have videos. Ah, uh, the Roller Retirement Home. Directly inspired by my classic video, The Problem with Old People. I, I think I was working on that. It might be the other way around. I don't remember completely, but I was working on that. And then inspiration struck me. <laughs> what if there was a roller about old people? And so the Roller Retirement Home was born. The Roller Retirement Home featured the track Thanksgiving, which is often considered one of the most repetitive and obnoxious in the game. The level also offered a challenge, and the winner would have art of them added to the level. With the Roller Retirement Home, of course, came a challenge. This was issued on Rollercast 12, the episode where we played the level, and the challenge was to play through the entire level with the music on, without taking breaks, and of course, you had to record or stream it, so that you could prove it. I expected someone to do the challenge kind of soon after the episode, maybe like a week or two after, I'm sure. I was like, you know, surely there will be someone insane enough to do it. No one did it. No one at all. The most ambitious roller created for Rollercast during this era was Pack and Roll, a collab map between Tad and Ice That's Cool. Coming up with a title for a Pac-Man themed roller was one of the hardest parts of making it, but then I found out there was literally a Pac-Man game titled Pack and Roll. It was just too perfect. During the process, we'd frequently like talk to each other about the level, stream the level making process on Discord. The level has a bunch of weird gimmicks, so it splits off into two paths at one point. So you can split your group into two, and then you race to see who gets up to the top first. And just take every step necessary to ensure that the level is as high quality as it could really be. Uh, the whole level has really low gravity because it's in space, and uh, there's just weird stats too. I don't remember what it is exactly, but the stats were really weird, and that was Ice's idea. But all of that was completely unnecessary, because at the end of the day, we asked ourselves one simple question. What would be funny? Uh, there's fire hydrants that shoot water to both sides and you can bounce off of it. Uh, there's parts where you can just fall down under the, like, the previous path, which we thought was funny. Uh, there's a gun block, which you can use to, like, shoot yourself forward, but they don't break the bombs because we thought it was funnier if it didn't. 
And stuff like that is what makes me believe the level was kind of bad for Rollercast, but really good on its own. There was one part that was really annoying with a huge gap that you would fall through to the layer below and you just have to go all the way back around all over again. I fell down that thing like twice or something. It was so annoying. Thematically though, it was probably one of the best rollers I've played and I think it will be hard to top. Rollercast began gaining a bit of controversy during this time as well. Many of the more hardcore roller players would criticize the series for playing levels that were far too short and easy, asking for longer and more challenging rollers to be featured. But Rollercast wasn't the only form of roller entertainment throughout the year. Pizza Eater had his own YouTube channel, and would stream all sorts of roller-related content, everything from straight gameplay to showcasing the roller creation process, and was often joined by Blaz. I feel like Pizza and Blaz really pushed rollers to their limits, in a way. Usually when I make a roller, I just think of a funny visual for the level. But those two were using Lua to make these absurd mechanics. Rollers started as kind of a lazy joke genre, but now we're getting these joke levels that take an insane amount of effort to make, which is awesome. I think there are some incredibly funny people in the community, and uh, the Pizza Eater 1000 being one of them, and I know he's very invested in... Um, making wacky stuff with with uh, with Lua, which I think is so cool every time I see it. And uh, I know he makes these amazing roller levels too. So, so, uh, so amused every time I see uh, what he's up to in PR3. So, Pizza Eater and Blaz, and I'm not super um, up to date, but I think uh, Gaster might have played a part in this as well. I could be wrong. But they are pushing Platform Racing 3 and specifically rollers to their limits using the code blocks, the Lua. And it's really cool to see, like, not only how much you can do with roller levels, but how much you can do with the game in general. But of course, there are many roller levels that I am amazed by. All of Pizza's rollers are very creative. And a lot of thought is put into them. In August, Pizza and Blast would stream Cooler Cast, a live stream dedicated to playing rollers too long for Ruler Cast, which included Blast's level Water Roll In. Live streams of these incredibly difficult rollers would become a staple of the channel. One of the more notable things Pizza managed to create with Lua was FYR Infinity, which would auto generate a unique roller in the level. The main roller featured on Pizza Eater's channel was FYR3. It was a sequel to the roller featured in April 2019's Roller Contest livestream, and was much longer than its predecessor. The level was divided into seven sectors, each one with a different gimmick. I know that Pizza has been making the fuck you roller 3 or whatever number he's on. My man's gonna catch up with the lamb before time on the number of sequels he hits. What does being a true roller mean? A true roller means that you cannot, like you did, like you say you want to play it, and you never do, you never complete it, and you never like, even like come close to beating it. That's what that's the definition of a good roller. Rollers should not be able to be completed, and for that reason, my favorite roller is um fuck you roller three by uh, the Pizza Eater one thousand. Apparently, it takes like a day to beat. FYR3 is kind of the definitive roller in my eyes. It combines so many elements from so many different classic rollers. The beginning is kind of the standard staircase, only with vanish blocks, which aren't checkpoints, so if you fall you get sent back to the start of the level. Uh, there's a sector very reminiscent of Swaffle, just scaled up to a ridiculous degree. There's even a part that's the elevator where you're forced to hit a bomb and then fall straight down uh, right out of Roller Desert 2. It feels like the culmination of every bad idea that the roller community had throughout the past couple years, and the level was absurdly long. FYR 3 was thought to be too long to even be possible to beat. The idea of finishing it became a running joke in the community, but that wouldn't stop some from trying. The first streamed attempt was on October 11th, 2019, where Pizza Eater tried a solo run of the level, giving up after four and a half hours, not even making it halfway through the level. The very next day, Pizza would attempt it again, this time joined with Blaz, giving up after six hours. The third attempt, this time joined with Nudie Naputi, only lasted a little under two hours. Rollers were easier in a group, and were far less tedious. Pizza had learned his lesson from his solo completion of FYR2, and in March, the FYR3 attempt group would form. A group consisting of some of PR3R's most skilled roller players, Pizza Eater 1000, Blaz, Nudie the Pootie, and Snowboard 547. The four of them would schedule attempts together in the hopes that eventually, they might beat the level. 
Despite a much larger group, there would be many failed attempts to come. Even with four players, the level was massive, and on occasion, players could be randomly disconnected from the game and kicked out of the level. On occasion, other people would join these attempts as well. During attempt number 10 on May 30th, 2020, the usual group was joined by Tad Tad, Rai Chaos, and Gladiator. The group decided to restart after Gladiator flew to the end of the level by hacking. And even with hacking, it took Gladiator 30 minutes just to fly to the finish. Finish. That's how long this level was, even without the bombs. During Sector 2, around the hour and a half mark, Rai Chaos and Snowboard had quit, and Nudie had to leave during Sector 4, around the 3 hour mark. This attempt went for around 7 hours. I was really losing steam once we got into Sector 4. It was like 2 in the morning, I was really tired. And that's around the time my iconic quote, Why do we exist? came to be. Thankfully, I was in a voice call with Ice. I don't think I would have kept my sanity otherwise. I didn't actually attempt it, but it was one of the saddest Discord calls I think I've ever been in. So, Tad is stuck on Fuck You Roller 3 for hours on end until he eventually gets kicked out of the game. He just gets disconnected entirely and they have to give up. All while I'm on Tad's Minecraft server, completely lost in the nether, can't find my way back, completely miserable as well. And the worst part was that all of this was at like 1 or 2 a.m. That was one of the worst Discord calls I was ever a part of. Pizza and Blaz continued for another few hours after that. They weren't able to get through Sector 5, but it had become their longest and closest attempt. After an unstreamed attempt on June 6th, that was the end of the FYR3 era. Pizza Eater had become more focused on other projects in PR3. When reflecting on this era, Blaz stated, It's probably the lowest point of my life. Can you imagine spending several hours just to continually fall at nearly the same point every time? Aside from FYR3, Pizza would stream the construction of the fourth entry in the series from time to time. While FYR3 was built to be just barely out of reach of completability, FYR4 was built to be much larger and much more difficult. It includes many ideas from FYR3, only scaled up by a sizable margin. This was the first ever roller to hit the game's level size limit. Pizza Eater believes it would take several straight days to complete it, and nobody has yet to make a real attempt. In December of 2020, and Tristan FYR3 returned after a few months without an attempt. Tad thought it would be fun to try the level again in January, but Pizza suggested they attempt it before the end of the year and the death of Adobe Flash. At the end of 2020, Adobe Flash support would end in web browsers. Platform Racing 3 would still be playable through the download version, but it was decided that beating the impossible roller would be a good send-off before Flash's end of life. On December 28th, Pizza, Tad, Blaz and Nudie all joined the lobby, but something unexpected happened. They were surprised to be joined by Lattice a returning player from the original Platform Racing 3 who had just recently discovered Reborn. So we had talked about organizing the run in the Platform Racing 3 Discord server, and Pizza had posted the link to the live stream there before we started. I knew we would need all the help we could get for this, so I posted the link in my own server in the hopes that someone, anyone, would join it. Of course, there was a lot of absolutely not, which is understandable. Then just as we're about to give up and start the level, Cade just pops out of nowhere. They don't even play Platform Racing 3 anymore by this point, and they were in the middle of a month-long break from Discord at the time. They just appeared out of nowhere to play this roller. I don't know exactly why I joined, because Fuck You Roller 3 had been attempted before and failed in the past. With a group consisting of roller experts, new players, and ex-players, the six of them set off to face the staircase. There were some unfortunate falls from Tad and Cade early on during the Vanish staircase, but the group was making good time. After around 20 minutes, the rest had begun working together to clear out Sector 2. While Sector 1 is a free-for-all mad dash to the end, Sector 2 requires a lot of teamwork to clear out the mines in the tunnel. The laser gun item could clear out every mine on the screen, but had a limited number of uses. After the many previous attempts, the group could calculate the most effective spots in the maze to use each shot. 
The group was separated for the majority of the first few hours. Most of the group would be together leading the front, with one or two players always a sizable distance behind. The first players to reach each sector would take a photo together to post to Discord as a progress update. After nearly two and a half hours, all six players were reunited in Sector 4. No previous attempt had had this many players remaining this far into the level, and no previous attempt had made it this far in such a short amount of time. But the momentum wouldn't last forever. Near the end of Sector 4, Lattice would go AFK for a long period before finally disconnecting. Lattice was a very new player to Reborn at the time, they only had the box hat and was mostly wearing the default parts. They played like three hours of this roller though, and was the first time I had ever seen them online. Someone who didn't even have an account for a full week managed to put up with a roller that long, it's unbelievable. During the last stretch of Sector 4 and into Sector 5, spirits were still high despite being down one player. After four and a half hours, right at the start of Sector 5, Ice That's Cool had joined the call to provide moral support. Yo, we're oh, playing is, is fuck you roller Ice That's you. Cool? Yeah. I notice it says here that four hours and 32 minutes have elapsed. <laughs> Is this true? I mostly just hung out. I am not attempting fuck you roller three, and I never will. But it was fun to just hang out and talk to people. I remember it got to the point to where every time Tad fell, we would play Brawl Stars for a bit. It took people like 30 minutes to fall towards the end of the level. During Sector 6, Blaz had to leave for the night. Pizza and Nudie made their way into the final Sector 7, while Tad and Cade would remain stuck in Sector 5. Eventually the two knew that they wouldn't be able to pass it, and were watching the livestream as Nudie and Pizza climbed closer and closer to the finish. Catnip Overdose and Mist were in the call watching the stream, with spectators on Discord waiting for the end. After 6 hours, Nudie Naputi reached the finish block and waited for Pizza Eater, who would arrive soon after. The two of them were the first and only players to best FYR3. Their names, as well as the names of the four who helped them through the first few sectors, were immortalized in the level's Hall of Fame. As was roller tradition, a screenshot of the winners was posted to Discord, and the reaction was very similar to that of the first victory on Roller Desert 2 all those years ago. It was the culmination of the past few years on Platform Racing 3. A few people decided to play a 40 minute level as a joke just for bragging rights. People thought it was insane that anybody would do that to themselves, and over three years later, uh, there's a roller that takes six hours to clear. And we only did it because we had a really good group that night. Rollers have always been about teamwork. Pizza, Nudie, and Blaz were so experienced and knowledgeable in the level. Cade was on break from Discord and just so happened to come back early. Lattice was a brand new player who somehow had the dedication to play this for three hours. It was like the stars aligned, and even if one of them wasn't there, I don't think we would have beaten it. Even Ice, Mist, and Cat, who were just in the call to help keep us awake. It was really incredible. It was surely an experience. I had never played Fuck You Roller 3 prior to this. And I wasn't one of the people who actually hit the finish block, but I still experienced the the winning of Fuck You Roller 3, and it was it was amazing to see that finally come to fruition. I really just don't know how they stayed there and completed the roller, but they did. And you know what? Good for them, man. I I'm surprised that there's even been a completed attempt, but it finally happened, so congratulations. Now we're just waiting on Fuck You Roller 4. 300 and, is that 84 minutes? Yeah, that's six hours. Wow. I, <laughs> I, I, I applaud the dedication. I, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's, it's dedication. It's, it's the same thing as if there were somebody that was trying to beat a very difficult trap level or uh, a frustration level even, because I think rollers are in essence, a subset of frust levels. You know, people play them, I think rollers more or less for the memes, but I think that um, people are, <laughs> people like a challenge, you know, and when they finish it, it's like, hey, you know, look what I did kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I imagine it's different for every single person, but um, I don't know, that would be the, <laughs> the thing I'd be going for. When later asked about the final winning run, Blaz said the following, 
When we put that run together, that felt like one of the coolest moments ever. Stringing together numerous hours of multiple attempts worth of knowledge to finally bring a team victory over a level that anyone would just call impossible and be fine with, it's one of the most enthralling experiences ever. Though I had to leave for the night and didn't get to experience the victory in person, and I had to give in due to an internet outage during the Arrow Sector, the semi-final one, I'm still satisfied with the result. I hate to be cheesy, that statement is a lie, but I would like to share one of my favorite quotes. Feel free to exclude this from the video if it's really bad, but whatever. Only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. Some dude named Robert F. Kennedy or something. The greatest obstacle that the roller community had ever faced had been overcome, but there was still one obstacle that remained, one that had been long forgotten, the Roller Retirement Home Challenge. Early January, Tad decides to do the Roller Retirement Home Challenge, and I had to moderate it. And honestly, I am glad Tad did it then and not later, because I would hate to be like, in my mid-60s and have someone tell me they wanted to do the Roller Retirement Home Challenge. But I did have to watch Tad complete the entire level. You know, I'd check in every now and again, turn the music back on. I did see some questionable things. One time I saw Tad kind of like move his mouse while his character wasn't moving, and I had to confront him about that. And then another time I saw Tad like join a steam game at the bottom right of my screen and I had to confront him about that too because you know we can't be having fun here regardless of that I decided to let him into the level because aside from that the run was pretty clean nothing too suspicious I decided that instead of just adding him to the roller retirement home I would create the Roller Retirement Home Deluxe Edition, which you could play now. The only difference is that Tad is added to the level in the Golden Corral, but that's what makes it deluxe. The completion of FYR3 had once again revived interest in rollers. After beating one of the hardest levels in platform racing history, the roller community wanted more. The FYR3 attempt group would be renamed the Bad Decisions Gang, and work to complete other older rollers. Starting with a level that was far too difficult when attempted on Rollercast, the History of Film Roller. The run was attempted on January 26th, 2021 by Pizza Eater, Tad, Nudie, and Blaz. It proved to be a greater challenge than they expected, with the four of them constantly falling back to lower sections of the level due to the strong knockback of the mines. Eventually, Blaz had to leave and was AFK for the remainder of the run, while the rest of the group continued upwards. After about three and a half hours, the three of them had beaten another roller thought to be unbeatable. That's not to say every one of these difficult rollers could be bested, however. The four of them, this time joined by Latticey, streamed their attempt of Test Super Roller by Gaster Skyraw on January 29th. After roughly two hours, the group had realized they had severely underestimated Test Super Roller, and abandoned the run. On February 12th, Pizza Blaz and Nudie beat the original FYR1 in around 10 minutes by exploiting it using hats. The original FYR never garnered much attention, and was often greatly overshadowed by its much larger successors. Aside from going back to finish older levels, there were plenty of new rollers made during the first few months of 2021 as well. One notable one was Reality by Tad Tad by Nudie Naputi, a low acceleration level where all the blocks are bouncy. Nudie later made Tad Tad's Safety Adventure, a roller where Santa Hat is required to pass through, and if you lose that hat, it's all over. With the recent surge in roller popularity caused by FYR3, it was time for another roller creation contest, this time hosted by Trash, who by this point had been head admin for some time. The contest started on March 2nd, 2021. It seemed like rollers had hit a new golden age, but nobody would have predicted what would happen next. On March 9th, the Pier 3 servers were down. Not much was thought of it at the time, it was assumed that it would be an easy fix, with the servers likely coming back the next day. But on March 10th, it was discovered that there was a fire at the OVH data center where Pier 3 servers were, which took down millions of sites. For a few days, it was unknown if Platform Racing 3's data was even safe, or if it had been destroyed. The last backup that ISO had was from October, meaning that if the center with Pier 3's data had been destroyed, every new level and block created for the past six months would be lost forever. All the hard work the community had put in for half a year would be gone. I was really feeling for ISO and the PR3 community when that happened, because, like, 
I mean, how can you not? Like, when you run a site dedicated to archival, when you see, like, the exact opposite of that happening, when you see data destroyed, that's that's just, like, it's just rough. And, like, I know how much effort people are putting into creating stuff on PR3, like the Pizza Eater 1000. I mean, he's doing so much programming in the Lua console that's on PR3 that, like, I can't imagine how much time and effort would be wasted if six months of content was deleted. The days waiting for information were long. If the data was actually lost, it meant the end for PR3R. Losing that much progress, some felt it wouldn't even be worth bringing back. Desperate for any content, some turned to playing Platform Racing 2 during the wait. With a short roller by Pizza Eater, PR3 servers be like, being created on March 12th. Later on that same day, Isokisa got the news that PR3 had survived. Servers would remain down for the next few weeks, but on March 30th, PR3 would return with all data intact. And with the game finally back up, the roller contest was back on. Pizza Eater created a Monogs roller, which uses Lua to cover the screen in text when a bomb is hit, with the text getting longer the more mines were hit. Xguest created Petter Uteliger's Telt, which featured moving goldfish bombs and fire blocks that fall from the sky. It's also the first roller to be a King of the Hat level, where you win the level by collecting the hat. Blaz made Scribbly Scruffle, the longest roller of the four submitted. It's similar to the My Apologies series, using similar mechanics and sector structure, but with a unique art style. And the first place level was Tad's Super Avocado Hell, a sequel to the original 2017 roller. It kept many of the same obstacles and ideas from the first with new challenges added in, artwork of many characters featured in other rollers, a traditional roller segment where you swim through a bowl of cereal, and two end blocks, one of them finishing the level and one crashing the game instead. Yeah, I made it so the finish block would switch between being a finish block and a block that just crashes your whole game and you don't win the level. Uh, Pizza suggested that to me, and it sounded funny, so sure. I remember X Guest spent like 40 minutes getting to the end of the level and then accidentally hit the kill block, which I do feel bad about. I still added him to the leaderboard at least. And later in the year, the original Avocado Hell would regain relevance. On August 5th, Nudie started speedrunning the level, attempting to beat LP9's 425 record that had been held for years. The level's long fall was the biggest time waster, and LP9 hadn't made many mistakes in their original run. Nudie tried again and again, and before long, a new record of 2.52 had been set by Nudie, with Pizza and Tad slightly improving their own times after. After roughly four years, LP9 had finally been dethroned. And immediately after beating LP9's record, Nudie went on to speedrun FYR2 solo, beating the level in 190 minutes, completely destroying Pizza's old record of 411 minutes. 2021 was the year of unfinished business. After 2020 closed out with the completion of a roller once thought impossible, a year was spent clearing every last challenge the community had previously faced. Despite everything that was accomplished throughout the year, there is still one challenge left to endure. Throughout the entirety of 2021, the one roller on everyone's mind was unlike anything that had been faced before, Blaz's My Apologies 4. A level that was found to be even more difficult than FYR3. FYR3 was a very traditional roller. It used the classic staircase shape and bomb ladders that began the genre, but scaled up to an unbelievable degree. My Apologies 4 was anything but traditional. The first area was a fairly easy downward climb, but the bombs do far more knockback, making it a bit tricky to navigate. Area 2 has players climbing straight up, using the two explosive walls to blast yourself up in the air while bombs in between walls knock you back down. Area 3 follows the design of the first three My Apologies levels, a basic tunnel filled with mines and pits. Area 4 is a massive maze filled with mines and five keys that players must find. Each one has to be hit to unlock the gate into the next area. It's incredibly difficult to reach the keys with the bombs knocking players around for minutes at a time. Only one player has to hit a key for it to unlock for everyone, so with a bigger group it's easier to split up and have each player go after a different key. Area 5 is another maze, but a little less random with fewer bombs. Players can take yarn of whatever color they choose and drop it behind them to leave a trail for the others to follow to help traverse the maze. Area 6 is the closest that the level has to a traditional roller sector. Players have lower stats here, making it a little more difficult, followed by a long elevator with mandatory bomb hits. Each one of these areas only has a checkpoint at the end, so if you fall off the level, you restart from the last one you hit. 
The checkpoint after Area 6 is a bit more risky. There's a small chance that it teleports you over a pit, forcing you to fall. And after this is Area 7, where the level really starts to get difficult. It's an incredibly long tunnel with bombs and holes, but this tunnel is longer than anything else in the level so far. It takes hours to clear. Hidden a bomb will blast you far to the left, and with low acceleration, it takes a long time to get back to where you were to hit the next bomb. That's where the Angel Wing item comes in. You get 20, and they give you a burst of forward momentum. You can use them to fly right back into the bombs instead of walking all the way there slowly, saving some time. However, if you fall down a hole, you can also use wings to fly back to the start of the sector. The fall is at its longest here, lasting several minutes to respawn. So you can save some time by recovering using wings instead of falling all the way back to respawn. Far enough into the tunnel, you can also use wings to skip ahead slightly in a few areas. There are so many different uses for wings, and you only get 20 at a time. If you run out, you have to get more at the beginning of the sector, which can take quite a bit of time to reach. This adds a layer of strategy that's not normally seen in rollers. The genre started out with mindlessly jumping into bombs, and now has players doing math to calculate the best usage of their limited wing count. And the further into the tunnel you travel, the more gimmicks are added to make navigation even harder. This area is the longest and most difficult section of the entire level. There had been a few small attempts before, but on March 30th, 2020, a large group gathered to take on the level. Blaz, Pizza, Tad, Nudie, Snowboard, Lattice, Fly Ninja 233, and this player Roblox formed the largest group for massive roller attempt that Pure 3R had ever seen. The run was abandoned after two and a half hours, after Fly Ninja and this player Roblox quit, and Nudie had gotten permanently stuck due to a glitch. There was another attempt the day after, with Blaz, Pizza, Tad, Nudie, and Lattice, as well as a surprise guest. Flashrock25 was one of the most well-known players throughout Platform Racing 3 Reborn's life, who had been around since the beginning and was a very frequent player throughout the years. Despite this, Flashrock hadn't been involved much with the roller side of the community until now. Aside from trying out a few here and there and creating the level Rollercast Episode 2 leaked back in 2018. Despite one less player, the group was making better time than the previous night, with all six still going strong by the time they reached the tunnel. After two and a half hours, Flashrock forfeits by accidentally clicking the exit button, but stays to watch the others continue the run. Around ten minutes later, Lattice, who had been AF K was disconnected, leaving only four remaining. At the three hour mark, they said farewell to Flashrock, who was leaving for the night. Their resolve higher than ever, determined to win it for Flash. They chipped away at the hallway for the next several hours. They were halfway through the final stretch, but with greatly increasing difficulty, no checkpoints, and the fall continuing to grow larger and larger, the run was abandoned after nearly six hours. There would be many more attempts, but nobody could get through that tunnel. On August 8th, it was decided that the level needed to be finished, no matter how long it took. Blaz, Pizza, Tad, and Nudie all got together to finally put this level to rest. And after a long, grueling 11 and a half hours, the run was abandoned, still far from the finish. With each attempt throughout the year, more bugs were ironed out and the difficulty would be slightly adjusted. Even with these adjustments, the level was by no means easy. My Apologies 4 was leagues harder than any roller previously faced. And on August 20th, the original four members of the Bad Decisions gang, Blaz, Pizza, Nudie, and Snowboard, attempted the level. Pizza was disconnected after three and a half hours, and Nudie Naputi made it to the end after roughly five. Nudie was the first to reach the end of Ruler Desert 2 back in 2017, the first to reach the end of FYR3 in 2020, the world record holder in Avocado Hell and FYR2, and the only one to conquer My Apologies 4. Nudie Naputi was the single greatest roller player that Platform Racing 3 Reborn would ever see. <laughs> 2021 saw many advancements within the roller community, but the greater platform racing community wasn't doing so well. With Adobe Flash being discontinued in web browsers at the start of the year, the games could now only be played in a downloadable version. This had been the way PR3 was usually played for the past couple of years, but this was new for PR2, which had always been hosted on several different websites, and a lot of people decided this was the time to move on from the games and depart from the community. 
Both games had been on a decline in their player count for a long time, but this year saw new lows for the series. In the summer of 2021, Acid Forums, the original Jigman's Village replacement that Pier 3 Reborn was first announced on, had shut down. Gods of Platform Racing 3, Pier 3's original Discord server, had been nothing but an ongoing counting war for over a year. Many players could feel it. We were approaching the end of an era. Early 2021, the final two episodes of Rollercast were recorded, being published late into the summer. The primary roller played in these episodes was called The Grand Tour. It took sections from every level that had been played throughout the series and put them all onto a single map, a fitting end to Rollercast. It's a brutal level, with multiple areas where you can fall all the way back to the very beginning, and areas where you can get permanently stuck. On the two episodes it was featured in, they made edits to the level partway through to stop and continue whenever this happened. No legitimate run has come close, although using a teleport exploit, Lattice once managed to reach the end in only 10 minutes. I think Rollercast had a really good ending. If you asked me years ago how Rollercast was gonna die and it would have to die, then I would say that we would just eventually stop talking to each other or maybe we just wouldn't produce any episodes anymore because I remember there's a point in time where we were producing less and less Rollercast episodes. But Rollercast having a proper send-off was just great to have, honestly. Because it's gotten to a point where RMX was gone, Kate didn't even really want to do it anymore, so having it have just one last proper send-off was the most I could really ask for. Ideally, I'd still be continuing it, but other people just don't want, didn't want to do it, and I'm really happy with how the finale turned out. Late into the summer of 2021, Platform Racing 3 suddenly regained some of its old activity that hadn't been seen in a long time. Many old members, nostalgic for the early years of Reborn, returned to the community. Weekly tournaments hosted by Trash were seeing new highs, and day-to-day -day activity was much more frequent. For the first time in years, PR3 would regularly see more daily activity than PR2. While most of PR3 was busy playing regular levels to make the most out of this newfound activity, rollers were still being played frequently, between my apologies attempts and speedrunning older levels. On July 30th, an attempt on AFK Roller took place. This was a roller that basically played itself for the most part. With a recently discovered exploit that allowed players to clone themselves, they tried the level with 40 players. It mostly worked, though it was extremely laggy. For a few months, PR3 was being played daily, with the weekly tournaments bringing in nearly every active player still around. But towards the end of August, Trash added six new hats to the game, and soon after announced that they would be taking a break from PR3. Trash had been hosting tournaments, the main source of activity, and keeping the game alive for roughly two years by then. The community held a farewell, where they played through all of Trash's levels while wearing their iconic set, to pay tribute for all Trash had done for the game. Shortly after Trash Trash's departure, a handful of other players left, while overall interest in PR3 was quickly fading for many. And this is when longtime admin Duffley returned to continue weekly tournaments and keep Platform Racing 3 at least somewhat alive. Duffley held a new roller collab, where all of the participants would create a sector on a single level. Desperate for tournament points, many people who normally wouldn't decided to join. The level was worked on by Snowboard, Blaz, Tad, Pizza, Ice That's Cool, John 3, and the Black Bigfoot. The level is extremely long, featuring many gimmicks that would send you to the start of the level or completely crash the game. No attempt at this level has made it past Snowboard section, which is the very start of the level. The level is seen as a cool achievement of the ruler community, and less so a fun level to play. On September 25th, Duffley asked for levels to be hosted for that day's tournament. Pizza Eater suggested 2018's Bumworld Deluxe by Ice That's Cool, and Duffley, who assumed it was the original Bumworld level and not a roller, hosted it. Thirteen players joined, only a few of them knowing what they were in for, and what followed was one of the greatest games Platform Racing 3 had ever seen. Everyone immediately recognized this as a roller level, and normally, it would have been disqualified from the tournament and they would have hosted something else instead. But the Magnet Hat, one of the recent hats just added by Trash dropped, and everyone needed the prize. Nobody wanted to forfeit, and the mad dash to the end began. Bumworld Deluxe was never meant to be played by the greater PR3R community. This level was originally created for Rollercast, and Ice built the level with several tricks to mess with the others, 
and every single one of them paid off here. Several players noticed the hole and took the top path to try to skip the level, being greeted with the massive L and being forced to turn back. Several more players fell down the first pit, which was made to trick the other ruler cast members, trapping them there for the rest of the episode. Players stuck on the bottom were begging for Duffley to use his admin commands to help them. While attempting to teleport Nudie and Apootie back onto the top, Duffley accidentally disconnects them, kicking them from the level. Duffley also attempts to spawn Cowboy Hats, a hat which allows players to fly, which would allow them to escape the pit. The hat spawned too high and landed on top of the level where nobody was able to reach them. The handful of trapped players stayed there for the rest of the game, desperately hoping for a way out that would never come. The Pizza Eater 1000, Ordo 9, and Logan 66677, the only three players who hadn't been trapped or kicked out of the game, were neck and neck racing to the end of the level. Eventually, Logan and Pizza got trapped in another area. Duffley manages to teleport them back onto the track with Ordo, and the race for the Magnet Hat continued. But while all of this was happening, nobody had realized that using the failsafe he had built into the level nearly four years prior, Ice That's Cool had already taken a shortcut to the end and won the hat less than a minute into the match. Magnet Hat, a new hat at the time, dropped there. And I remembered what I did to that level, and I noticed I was the only person wearing top hat in that level. People join, they notice it's a roller, some people get stuck at the little platform at the bottom, and meanwhile I just slither my way through the back, crawl up the little vanish blocks, and teleport to the finish, and just get magnet hat for free. Unfortunately, it didn't count for tournament. I would have really liked those tournament points to go with it, but <laughs> that was crazy how it was hosted for tournament. More than FYR3, or my apologies for, this has been the most defining moment in roller history to me. Working together to overcome a massive impossible task is incredible, but rollers at their core have always just been a big joke. Seeing Pizza trick an admin into hosting this level in a tournament, having such a rare prize drop, and seeing every single trick that Ice had placed into the level come into play as everyone stayed in the game out of desperation is really what rollers have always been about to me. Like, this could not have gone more perfectly. A similar event happened during a tournament on October 23rd, where Pizza convinced Duffley to host the roller Space Cow. Gaster Skyrom mysteriously completed the level in under 30 seconds, despite the level having no known failsafe. In December of 2021, Trash came back to the community, and returned to hosting tournaments on weekends. They had been gone for a few months, and completely missed out on the Bumworld Deluxe fiasco. And on January 2nd, 2022, just like Duffley previously, Trash was tricked into hosting Bumworld Deluxe again during a tournament. I don't know how this happened twice, but it did. <laughs> And I really could have never imagined getting this much success out of one level. Bumworld Deluxe was created in early 2018, had mostly gone unnoticed by players, and nearly four years later had become one of the most well-known rollers within the community. Suggesting Bumworld Deluxe became an ongoing joke in weekly tournaments. On February 20th, Trash gave in after it was requested so many times, and intentionally hosted Bumworld Deluxe in a tournament. By this point, everyone knew the level had a secret dev path, but only three of them knew that Top Hat was required. Ice That's Cool, The Pizza Eater 1000, and Tad Tad placed Top 3 with Top Hats. And Trash understandably disqualified this round from the tournament. Never Ever hosting Bumworld Deluxe again. It's, um, I hope we get some resurgence in, uh, in roller levels in Platform Racing 3 Reborn soon, and hopefully we get a, a, a tournament, tournament based on rollers, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, you know. I think rollers declined in popularity for the same reason that just Pira 3 declined in popularity, and like, obviously it's still running to this day, and people are still playing it, but the people who were super into rollers and would promote rollers and host them and talk about rollers, I feel like all of those people have sort of moved on a little bit. I, me included, like, I don't play Pira 3 that much anymore, and I was definitely one of the roller people who would join a roller level any day. But unless PR3 blows up in popularity, or rollers learn to move to another medium, they're gonna die out at some point. The PR3 community is stubborn and faithful, so they'll stick around for a while yet, but that doesn't mean that communities don't have a lifespan. Over the years, the platform racing series has heavily declined in popularity. 
Considering it's a nearly 15-year-old series of Flash games, they're doing fairly well, but it's become obvious that there's an expiration date. Platform Racing 3 had survived being shut down by Sparkworks. It had survived the ending of Adobe Flash Player. It had survived a data center burning down. And Platform Racing 2 had been through plenty of its own troubles. How many more near-death experiences would it take before these games just stopped coming back. Rollers thrived throughout PR3R's life, although some would claim they contributed towards the game's downfall. If a bunch of other players were in a roller level and you weren't interested in rollers, you'd be waiting for a very long time for anyone to come back to start a new level with. With an ever-decreasing player base, rollers are an activity killer. But rollers also brought a lot of positivity to the community. It was something absurd to laugh at, and something for a dedicated few to work towards. They brought people together. And rollers were typically hosted during inactive hours to not interfere with the little bit of regular activity they had. There were plenty of reasons why these games died off. Decreasing interest in online Flash games, an overabundance of drama, and the games just growing old to some. The original platform racing released in 2007, well over a decade ago. The kids and teenagers who grew up playing them... grew up. Many have gone off to college, started careers, started families. Their time spent playing races, competing in deathmatches, making their own levels, and making friends were magical, but those days can't last forever. Rollercast is basically what started my channel. <laughs> that was like... <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. No, Rollercast episode one was like the fourth video on my channel. That was Holy the, shit! That was like... <laughs> If RMX didn't say, hey, it would be funny, Ted, if we made a roller podcast for YouTube. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah. If, if, if that did not happen, I might not even be making videos. I wouldn't be friends with most of the people I'm friends with now. I we owe it all. We probably would not, like, talk. <laughs> I want to see the alternate, like, time travel universe where Rollercast never oh my existed. God, that, like, I remember back when Platform Racing 3 Reborn was, was, like, first, like, picking up steam and people were, like, you know, reminiscing over old PR3 and it's just like, oh my god, it's back and, like, meeting old people and new people and all that. And people started doing the same exact hypothetical where it's just like, this fucking guy, Jacob Grant, if Jigman never existed, none of this... Like, holy shit. Imagine yeah. alternate universe uses, and they're, like, significantly cooler, and the only difference about them is that they never play platform racing <laughs> yeah, like, 3. Yeah, like, I- sometimes I like to think about <laughs> hypotheticals like that. It's really amazing how far a stupid joke has gone. We started making bad levels and submitting them to contests, we'd started a podcast trying to play through them, we spent months and months playing a single level trying to optimize runs, finding new techniques and skips. Rollers have changed how we not only play platform racing, but other level builder games as well. Rollers have brought people together and formed real friendships, which is insane to think about. And all of this because SuperGuy0173 made this joke level. I don't think anyone in the community has heard from SuperGuy in years. He deleted his Discord account a year or two back. I really hope he finds this someday and sees just how much of an impact he had on the game and its community. The fire that nearly wiped out six months worth of Pier 3 history was an especially strong reminder that this game won't last forever. Which raises a question, could rollers survive without Platform Racing 3? Absolutely they can, and in fact, I think they already do. Many games with level editors already have these levels that take massive amounts of time to complete. Roller levels are a metaphor for like this idea of testing patience. There are people who sit through 10 hour videos for charity. Obviously it's for charity, but they also do it because it's just such a test of someone's patience. And I feel like that's what roller levels are, maybe on a slightly smaller scale. This idea that you can be tested in that way, I think is appealing on its own. And I think if you introduce that to video games, that's the future of roller levels. I actually added, speaking of other mediums for roller levels, I actually added a roller mode to the game that I'm working on. Uh, I just I just thought it was hilarious that you can pretty much make a roller level in any game if you try hard enough. And it's I, I keep talking about patience, but it's not only patience, it's also just toying with the player or user, like doing things within the design that 
frustrate intentionally and allow the user to know that they are being intentionally frustrated. And again, if you flip it around, that's what makes it appealing. <laughs> Roller levels have about the brightest possible future because their present is about as obscure as it can get. I used to think that it would be a good idea to make a roller level on Mario Maker somehow, but I have no idea how to do that, and I don't think I'll ever figure that out due to the level size limit. I've made some rollers in Mario Maker 2. There's a level size limit, which makes it a bit difficult, but what I found is by making a vertical level with stairs going back and forth, you can still create the long fall. It tends to work pretty well. Still not perfect, but I think with some work, we can really make Mario rollers happen. And Mario Maker 2 has online multiplayer, so you still sort of get that community aspect to it. I don't know. Could work. As Pizza Eater has proven, rollers are possible in other creation-based games as well, such as Minecraft. And this one that he made, if you fall down the lava, you have to start all over again. Another game, Headbumper Editcraft, which is heavily inspired by the platform racing series, has seen a few rollers as well. Any game with a level editor, people are going to try making a roller in it. Whether they're in Platform Racing 3, or branch out into other games and mediums, the concept of roller levels will last a very long time. Nobody involved in the events that took place in PR3R from 2017 to 2022 is likely to ever forget their time with roller levels, as they literally took up a significant portion of their lives. I suppose some people still enjoy the camaraderie that roller levels really created. After all, it's not just, uh, you know, a, a mad dash to the finish block, it's a journey, and it's a journey made better by friends. It's really what Platform Racing 3 was all about, but, well, just like Platform Racing 3, nothing lasts forever. It, usually in real life, whenever I hung out with my friends, we'd go, like, to some fast food place or go to the mall and loiter there. And initially, when I was introduced to rollers, I thought, that that's stupid, what's the point of that? But then I realized, that might just be the virtual equivalent of that, which is hanging out and doing nothing, but like you're kinda doing something, but also, not really. That made no sense. Rollercast was fun while it lasted, I had a good time with it. Yeah. Thanks for having me on yeah. here. Yeah. Thanks for being on it, I guess. It's hard to be sentimental when every single sentence sounds goofy, goofy as fuck, but like, yeah, genuinely, <laughs> this was a great time over the past four years. I hope Thanks for able. rolling on, gamers! <laughs> <laughs>
Where is a roller level? These are all questions we should ask ourselves, I think, when discussing the topic of roller level. What do you think of the funny drat? <laughs> what do you think of the funny rat drawing roller rummy? Oh, I love funny rat. Funny rat's awesome. I don't know what I don't know what roller rummy is, but funny rat is pretty funny. I like I like the funny rat. It's good. Okay, here's the scenario: a hypothetical rat is being described as funny to me. Okay. And then someone asked me what I would think of said rat. I'd probably think that it'd be funny. Who wouldn't think it'd be funny in this scenario? What kind of question is th Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, you know, it, it, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's, um, you know, it, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 um, you know, uh, yeah. What is your favorite roller level and why? I like, um, hair rollers. Like those, the, like the things you put in your hair to make it all curly. That's, those can be, um, pretty fashionable, I guess. Uh, I don't know if that, is that what you're asking for? I don't All right, Tad, I guess, has sent me some questions, and it is my time to answer them. So, my first question that Tad sent to me, what was your first time experiencing a roller? Do you remember your first level? And the answer to that is no. We were the finest riders in all the land. The bomb riders, we called ourselves. Now, we were veterans of uh, the old level bum world, and we said no to bums. Every bum we saw, we screwed off and rode them down. But after... Years and years of riding, you get tired. Your bum gets sore from riding all those bums. And, uh, well, sometimes you gotta know you got when to retire, you gotta know when to settle down. And so I did. And I never rode another bum ever again. Not until I was called upon on roller cast, but you know that story already, don't you? Do you think ideas that started with roller levels could expand beyond PR3 and into other games? Yeah, uh, sure, uh, Pong? It, it's, I mean, you can think about stuff while playing Pong, that could be pretty fun. Pretty fun to think about things while playing Pong, like, cool ideas that you think about with other games. Yeah.